Hello, this is part three of the governing principles of the deep state. I am actually reading to you the principles that they themselves tell us are their governing principles. As I go along, I will give commentary where I feel that it's important and can add insight into what we see happening in our world today. They say that their goal is now only a few steps off. In fact, Hillary Clinton, her election, I believe, was the final step in their goal. And that's why they're so mad today. Have you ever seen people so angry at a group of people pointed at one person in particular, President Trump? I've never seen it. As evil as Obama is and was as president, none of the patriots and none of the righteous on the earth rose up in the vileness that you see having arisen against President Trump. That should tell us something. You know, there's still a lot of people who want to put President Trump in the same group, in the same class as the deep state. But you need to open your eyes. You need to be wise. You need to understand what is happening is not simply a psyop as some would say. It's not pretend what the Democrats are saying. It's not pretend when you have famous people talk about killing our president. When you have famous people talk about putting his son into a cage and doing terrible things to him. That's not a psyop. Those people are speaking from the vileness in their hearts because they hate something. Do you understand? They hate what Trump stands for. They hate that he stands for destroying their world. They hate that. There remains a small space to cross, and the whole long path we have trodden is ready now to close its cycle. When this ring closes, all of the earth will be in a powerful vice. The constitution scales of these days will shortly break down for we have established them with a certain lack of accurate balance in order that they may oscillate incessantly until they wear through the pivot on which they turn. Do you see all of the workings going on these days concerning the Constitution of the United States and how feverishly the Democrats are trying to destroy the foundations of our Constitution, are trying to destroy even the way that people are elected in this government. So that, so that illegals can vote, so that criminals can vote, so that children down to age 16 can vote. In other words, the people that they think would support them so that they could maintain the majority. They even want to do away with the Electoral College. If we did not have the Electoral College, President Trump would not be president. We would have Hillary Clinton right now. The Constitution even though it has been battered, and look at, what, look at what has been done by the liberal and the evil 
justices that have been on the Supreme Court, how first they outlawed prayer in school, how 11 years later they made abortion the law of the land, how years after that they made it a right that homosexuals could marry. They have, and this that's just a few of the things they have done. Slowly but surely, they have broken the basis of law and order in this country. And they've used constitutional judges to do that because they could not get their way through the people. The people would not have voted for these things. None of the, none of the radical things that have happened in our country for many, many years happened because a majority of people voted for them. The people are under the impression that they have welded their constitution sufficiently strong and that they have all along kept on expecting that the scales would come into equilibrium. But the pivots, the kings on their thrones, are hemmed in by the representatives who play the fool, distraught, with their own uncontrolled and irresponsible power. This power they owe to the terror which has been breathed into the palaces, into the places of government. As they have no means of getting at their people into their very midst, the kings on their thrones are no longer able to come to terms with them and so strengthen themselves against seekers after power. We have made a gulf between the far-seeing sovereign power and the blind force of the people so that both have lost all meaning. For like the blind man and his stick, both are powerless apart. What they're speaking about here has to do with the destruction of the nations in Europe and Russia, the destruction of kingdoms, first the destruction of the czar. Before that, the destruction of France and other nation, nations through Napoleon. Then the destruction of Europe itself through two horrible world wars. In order to incite seekers after power to a misuse of power, we have set all forces in opposition one to another, breaking up their liberal tendencies toward independence. To this end, we have stirred up every form of enterprise. We have armed all parties. We have set up authority as a target for every ambition. Of states, we have made gladiatorial arenas where a lot of confused issues contend. A little more, and disorders and bankruptcy will be universal. The deep state was on both sides of World War I and World War II. The deep state is what caused the destruction of Europe, the destruction of Japan, the destruction of much of Russia, the slaughter of untold millions of people, mostly Christians, babblers, inexhaustible, have turned into oratorical contests, the sittings of parliament and administrative boards. Bold journalists and unscrupulous pamphleteers daily fall upon executive officials. Abuses of power will put the final touch in preparing all institutions for their overthrow, and everything will fly skyward under the blows of the maddened mob. All people are chained down to heavy toil by poverty, now more firmly than ever. They were chained by slavery and serfdom. Think of what the Democrats have always done to the black race, promising them everything and keeping them poor, keeping them in poverty. President Trump has raised them to the highest state of prosperity ever in this country, and yet not a word not a word is said about that in the mainstream media. Not a word is said of that by 
his adversaries in power by the Democrats. Not a word is even said by the rhinos, the Republicans in name only, who still haunt our nation's capital in Congress and in the Senate. All people are chained down to heavy toil by poverty, more firmly than ever. They were chained by slavery and serfdom. From these, one way and another, they might free themselves. These could be settled with, but from want, they will never get away. We have included in the Constitution such rights as to the masses appear fictitious and not actual rights. All these so-called people's rights can exist only in idea, an idea which can never be realized in practical life. What is it to the worker, bowed double over his heavy toil, crushed by his lot in life, if talkers get the right to babble, if journalists get the right to scribble any nonsense side by side with good stuff. Once the people have no other profit out of the Constitution except a few pitiful crumbs which we fling them from our table in return for their voting in favor of whatever we dictate, in favor of the men we place in power, the servants of our deep state. Republican rights for a poor man are no more than a bitter piece of irony, for the necessity he is under of toiling almost all day gives him no present use of them, but the other hand robs him of all guarantee of regular and certain earnings by making him dependent on strikes by his comrades or lockouts by his masters. The people under our guidance have annihilated the aristocracy, have annihilated the kings, who were their only, their one and only defense and foster mother for the sake of their own advantage, which is inseparably bound up with the well-being of the people. Nowadays, with the destruction of the aristocracy, the people have fallen into the grips of merciless, money-grinding scoundrels who have laid a pitiless and cruel yoke upon the necks of the workers. We appear on the scene as alleged saviors of the worker from this oppression when we propose to him to enter the ranks of our fighting forces as socialists, as anarchists, as communists, to whom we always give support in, accord in accordance with an alleged brotherly rule, the solidarity of all humanity. The aristocracy, which enjoyed by law, the labor of the workers was interested in seeing that the workers were well fed, healthy, and strong. We are interested in just the opposite, in their diminution, in the killing out of the people. You've heard, haven't you, that the deep state wants to destroy 90% of humanity, wants to kill all the useless eaters. This has been a plan for a long time. Our power is in the chronic shortness of food and physical weakness of the worker because by all that this implies he is made the slave of our will. And he will not find out. He will not find in his own authorities either strength or energy to set against our will. Hunger creates the right of capital to rule the worker more surely than it was given to the aristocracy by the legal authority of kings. I believe I'll end this one here today. Bear in mind these things because certainly we see, I have seen in my lifetime, a speeding up of all of these principles that I've gone over in these last three videos. And yet there are many more yet to go through. It will become so clear to you what the powers that be, what those who hide in darkness have done to us, that you who have never seen will finally awaken because the time has come 
to wake up.